sweatpants that still is in the morning In line for a table but the locals are swarming Gotta get my coffee or soon I'll be snoring Lazy Sundays never get boring Telling Syracuse stories Collective came um, out of a VVB basement. Um, we, we, we drafted this, this whole game plan with me and two of my best friends, Kenny Buckner and Cole Smith. And we were already individually doing the things that the company does. So like I was already shooting videos uh, for profit. I was already doing photo shoots, you know, creating graphics, things like that. But it got to a point where the demand was higher than that that I could supply. And so therefore, we, we, we needed to figure out a strategic way to set up um, essentially a company to where we can do what we're already doing, um, but make, make larger profit with, with more clients. Um, so I'm Kenny Buckner, sophomore here at Syracuse. Um, essentially the CFO, so Chief Financial Officer of the Collective. Um, so essentially like I handle any type of financials, um, income, like whatever we spend, expenses, um, just trying to like investments, what we try to plan on for the future, like for the next six months, just like kind of keep track of everything that goes on. The collective literally just came from, we we're sitting down and we kept saying, okay, we are a collective. What do we want to be called as a collective? Um, and it just was like, hey, we're just, let's just be the collective. Uh, that's what we are. It's a collective of talents. It's a collective of interests. It's a collective of projects, um, a collective of brands. It's all of that. And so um, as a totality, um, just in terms of gifts and aspirations, dreams, we all specialize in different things. Like Kenny's in um, finance, Dom's in project management. Uh, you know, Juwan is in more in advertising, marketing, and then me with more production. And so we all specialize in different things, but we come together to perform as a collective. Three big, like so, me, Kelsey, and Craig, Bobby, like the we're like the three big people, like CEO, financial director, and like creative director. Mm -hmm. um, but like, especially when it comes to, like the creative side, like we have so many people like involved. So like, we like we might need like five people for this project, we might need ten people for this project. So it kind of like depends, it varies. Mm -hmm. But like, it's just like like so many artists and like creative people like on this campus. It's just like a phone call away, like yo, can you help with this? From the basis of it, it wasn't a business, like. Collective was really supposed to be like a performance type group. Like we were supposed to like we were gonna have like pop up shops and like like somebody spitting poetry over here while like someone's singing over here while someone's dancing like like a like a showcase kind of thing. And so like that kind of altered into like becoming the business like creating like becoming a creator of art and uh, using that like for a profit um, and like building up the business around that. So like it was pretty conscious. So really our clientele like is small like small businesses, small companies um that need any like, type of advertisement. Um but like student orgs that like could do it, like pretty much like our clientele is like kinda of limitless. Um like whoever just like really needs like graphic design or anything like that. Um like for us it's typically like smaller companies or like on the rise companies or just like artists in general, like music artists or um people who just like kinda of wanna get their craft out there. Shooting this music video. How do you say music video in Spanish? Music? How do you say music? Music? I think that is how you say music in Spanish. Yeah. First guy club. Like, it doesn't put out anything that's like whack, no, like nothing lame. Like, if we're gonna put out something, we're gonna put out something like 150%. Like, it's gonna be something you want, it's gonna be something dope. Like, we're not gonna put out like anything lame. Like, that's not what the clutch is about. So, like, whatever we do, we do it fire. We like have that passion, have that rage, like, to like just build upon everything. My favorite part of working with Collective is I'm working with such great people. The people on the team are amazing, very talented. Um, it can be tedious at times trying to work out schedules and time management and 
at the end of the day, we're students here at Syracuse, and so figuring out ways that we can balance school with work. But really just the people. It's fun working with your best friends when you guys all have something to bring to the table. So I just love working with the people that I work with. Kelsey's a boss. Like, she's very chill. Um, Kelsey's definitely like, one of those people, like, whenever she has like a drive or like a mission, she's getting it accomplished. Like, she does what it takes. Like, she has that ambition, um, but she also has like that execution as well. So like, that's like, throughout like, our friendship, that's like, I've always seen that. Um, my childhood was fun. Um, I was like the class clown, uh, the goofball. And so um, I was getting into trouble, um, but realizing that there was so much leadership potential that came in that, um, and just had to learn how to steer it in the right direction. And so in high school, I was able to do that um, and creating a business and creating a company. Oh, she's like the full throttles and collective. Like when it started as like just a creative type of group, um, she was the one who like pushed it forward, kept pushing it forward. Like, yo, we we're really about to change this. Like make this a company. Like she was like the behind the scenes, like as a CEO, like she pretty much ran everything. Um, just like how like we moved and she does a lot of creative design. So she like got a lot of the clients that she used um, and like implemented it for the collective. Um, so she's just been like that total driver um, the whole time. Both my parents work for um, like working media, uh, or my dad and my stepmother both work in media. Um, and so and then my mom works in accounting. And so that just kind of helped with my desire for business as well as media to come together. Advertising uh, came again from my parents. Um, and so from a creative advertising standpoint and just like creating content within advertising um, really just came from uh, my dad works at CNN. So I'd always be in the control room. I'd always um, just be in that environment. And so I just fell in love with production and, and, and I like to sell things, uh, whether that means I'm selling myself or selling a product or, um, or selling a reel. Um, I just enjoy making someone want my product. Um, and so I've just always been interested in that. I would say that um, understanding my black identity um, when it comes to business and when it comes to just production as a whole is definitely something that is huge and something that people don't think about a lot of times. Um, I would say especially as a woman um, in the field of media as a black woman there are many challenges that, that you face um, but I think again like being able to look at those challenges and being able to transcend past them and allowing that to be motivation as well. Um, we even look at things like the Oscars and the Emmys and we look at representation. Um, the work that I do, I want to be able to increase representation, be able to create stories um, that people can relate to. Representation is a big deal. Um, having that collective, like being a part of that is a huge like, aspect of that. And like the music artists that we listen to typically like are like of the African American Latino descent. Um, so like helping those people out is dope to us. Part of the collective is like, it's exclusive, but like the people, there's so many people, diverse people in it like from different backgrounds, different places, different like countries, so it's kind of dope. As a kid, um, there weren't a lot of stories that I can look at on the TV or like um, a lot of shows that I could watch and see myself within. And so just the work that I do through Collective, um, we really strive to, to promote representation and to promote inclusivity um, through all of our projects. So uh, with the collective between now and um, by the time I graduate, which is around two years from now, um, the goal really is just to continue to do what we're doing, but doing it better and at a, at a larger audience. Um, so continuing to, to pick up new clients, meet with new clients, um, take on new projects, especially using the breaks as much as we can. So spring break, winter break, summer break, um, to be able to meet with as many clients as we can, do as much work as we can. Five year plan is I eventually want to open up like a studio. A uh, space where people are able to come in, freelancers are able to come in and work on projects that the collective has um, in one big studio space. So um, we'll have our own like audio engineers, graphic designers, videographers, photographers being able to work out of this space. While we operate out of Syracuse, our goal is New York State um, so that we can still travel within the state. I mean, even if we've even formulated our class schedules that give us uh, four day travel weekends and things of that sort so that we can accommodate that need. I would definitely say the best way to manage being a full-time student and running a business is having people in your corner, having friends, having mentors who would tell who would tell me, you know, Kelsey, like you're doing too much right now, you know, you need to step back, or you know, hey, like I know that you have a meeting with a client at 12, but you have a class at two o'clock that you're not prepared for, like, yo, know, like, do you need help? Do I need to do this for you? Like, whatever. Um, and so my friends and my my circle. Um, 
they definitely hold me responsible um, and hold me accountable, and they are kind of the reason why everything is able to stay afloat. All these part of these other extracurricular activities. Um, so it's definitely just been like a time management thing as well as just like learning, okay, this is how you budget, this is how you invest, like having to go to um, the Black Soul Launch Pad or like going to um, the Entrepreneurship Center at Whitman, like learning like these things that are like, unnecessary for like a business to run. Can you finish a sentence for me? Kelsey Davis is? A creative, um, a humble servant. Um, I like to see, I like to believe that all the work that I do is out of service. And that's the way, that's what keeps me going. Um, every project that I'm working on, it's to serve someone in a certain way, in a certain capacity. And I really hope that all of my projects, whether you know it's a music video or um, a documentary piece or whatever, that in some type of way it's serving a greater good. Um, and it's not just about the tangible, you know, MP4, but like the, the actual file transcends farther um, through its message. If you could describe Kelsey in like a few words, a few words. Yeah, what would you describe it as? Um, ambitious, strong willed, um, fire, like her like craft is like amazing. Um, if you could do the same to the uh, collective. Collective. Innovative, um, that's a good one. Innovative, fire as well, um, and um, helpful, I think. Like, we, like, that's part of our job, like, to help people, like, help companies build their rep. And what is your philosophy in life? My philosophy in life? Everything you do, do with excellence. Um, whether that means the outfit that you're wearing, or the test that you're about to take, or the presentation that you're about to give, or the conversation that you're having with someone, I believe that. I'm a very zero or 100 person. I'm either going to not do it or I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. So that's my philosophy and everything that I do, I try to do it to the best of my ability.